And I think it's great that we're here together live for a change, giving Al and JC and Joan a little break uh, from pre-recording and editing and so forth. And I really wanna thank those that are participating in the Zoom service as well, from the safety of their homes, Carol Gilchrist, Kathy Dodd-Smith, and Darlene Morden for reading scripture today, and John Duffin, who's helping with the technical you know, capabilities. What we need to show our lyrics of our hymns and play the music through Zoom, and John will be doing that during the service. Uh, just a reminder about, you know, NCN is looking for toothbrushes, toothpaste, those sort of things for people that uh, make themselves available to NCN and, and who they deal with. So if you have anything like that, contact Gay Loveland or Jean Ann Davis or bring your items to the church on Thursdays and they'll be collected and then go to NCN. Now, as you recall, I've also invited you to join in on this discussion on 21 things you are you may not know about the Indian Act. It's quite a um, thought-provoking read from Bob Joseph. And in light of uh, the what was found out this week in Kamloops, BC, at a former um, residential school where the 215 um, skeletons were found, um, it'd be important, and I really encourage you even if you don't read this book, to join in the conversation on June the 7th at 7.30. So contact Katie Joachim or Sandra Anya Frick if you're interested in doing that. Um, you know, an atrocity like what we've just heard in the news about these 215 dead children whose skeletons were found should never be repeated again, but we have to learn about why those sort of things happened in order to change the future and the future for all Canadians as well. Uh, there's still time for that exciting music event some of you talked about, even though it was a bit of choppy video at the beginning, the psychology of Beethoven as it's explored through word and music. Uh, grateful that Dr. Deborah Henry, Aaron Rosen, Peter Drake and Ron McKee participated in that video. And the tickets are still available through Eventbrite. As soon as you order today or tomorrow, you'll receive the link to that um, concert. And it is available and probably until tomorrow uh, night at midnight or Tuesday morning early. So you don't, you're just not limited to watching it once. You can watch it more often than that. And I want to remind you that next Sunday being June the 6th, it's the first Sunday of the month. So we will have a pre-recorded worship service. Again, thanks to Al and JC and Joan. And uh, we'll be, I'll be celebrating communion with you as well in your homes. Today's service is slightly different uh, than normal because there's a few more scripture readings. There are a lot more hymns that you can sing out and loud at home with, drive your family members crazy, or maybe the dog who will howl along with you. And then you can... Um, but I, it's telling the, the story of Trinity today. I will have a very short message. You can't believe how short it is. Um, and so with that, that will be our worship service today and uh, the prayers that unite our hearts as well. So let us join together now and sing our first hymn, Christ whose glory fills the skies and the words will be displayed on your screen. And so as I said, you can sing out loud at home. Sing at the top of your lungs. It's a great thing to start off the day with. John, would you display our first hymn?
Now, I don't want you to be confused. I'm not in the sanctuary. I am still connected to the uh, the uh, net here through Bobby Joe's office. But I did take some pictures earlier in uh, a few months ago of the windows, and I thought that would make a good background rather than looking in Bobby Joe's office. Same as John has a picture as well. I'm going to ask you to join with me in prayer. Let us pray. O Holy One, bless this time in the name of the three who are over us. Bless this time in the name of the one who guides us. Bless this time in the name of the one who has shown us the way and the truth. Bless this time in the name of the one who accompanies us and sustains us on our journey. Amen. This next hymn is very familiar and very appropriate for Trinity Sunday. You probably know most of the words by memory. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. It will only be verses 1 and 4. And I must apologize that the voice recording from this recording, which was done on October the 13th last year, is not very good. So I invite you to sing out as you are comfortable at home. John, would you play this hymn for us as well? I'm going to ask Darlene Morden to start her video and unmute herself for our first readings. Okay, um, good morning. Uh, the first reading that I'm doing today is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and then verses 3 to 4, and then verse 31. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning. The second reading I'm doing is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1, and then verses 3 to 4. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty, and the whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. God's word for life. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Darlene. Now let's raise our voices again. And John, I'm going to ask you to put up, Be Thou My Vision.
hope that got you started as well and to open our hearts and our minds to hearing the next scripture which will be read by Kathy Dodge Smith. Kathy, you'll need to turn on your video. I'm there. You are there. Very good. Good morning. The scripture I'm reading this morning is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the creator, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the creator glory and strength. Ascribe to the creator the glory of God's name. Worship the creator in holy splendor. The voice of the creator is over the waters. God of glory thunders over mighty waters. The voice of the creator is powerful. The voice of the creator is full of majesty. The voice of the creator breaks the cedars of Lebanon and makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the creator flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the creator shakes the wilderness, the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the creator causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in God's temple, all say glory. The creator sits enthroned over the flood. The creator sits enthroned as ruler forever. May the creator give strength to all people. May God bless all God's people with peace. For the word of God among us, thanks be to God. Thanks, Kathy. One of the songs we all enjoy hearing and singing is Amazing Grace. I encourage you to look up the history of this and how it was written by a former slave owner and how he was released from his iniquities. And that's what the presence of God does in our lives. And so now let's listen to the chancel choir sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Broken. The soloists will be Laura McLaughlin and Ron McKee. Pat McKee is on guitar, Mike Ware is on accordion. You know more for my body.
As we let that rest with us for a moment, I'm going to ask Carol Gilchrist to read from the letters to the Romans. Now, in Paul's letter to the Romans, he he's very much a what I call a cheerleader. If you had somebody that would encourage you and so forth, and so the early church in Rome, that's what he's doing. And so I'd like you to hear these parts of the letter to the Romans and, and take that in as well in this Trinity Sunday. Carol, would you start your camera as well? You've just muted your camera. How's that? There you go. You're perfect. Okay, good. Good morning, everybody. This scripture reading is Romans 8, verses 12 to 17. So then, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but have received the spirit of sonship. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the spirit himself bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. May God add his blessing to this, the reading of his holy word. Thanks, Carol. When we cry out, Abba, Father. So as I said at the beginning of this, even through our technical difficulties, there's a short message today. You'll be able to count it down, basically. But I'm first going to ask you to pray with me. Holy and triune God, be with us as we've experienced your word, and now we act on its wisdom in all that we do. We ask this in the name of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. And today is... Trinity Sunday, where we speak about, or we try and speak about, our triune God. And words that are sung and have been spoken so far that aren't mine, but they're from scripture readings, the hymns that we're singing in the safety of our homes, and the meditative music that we just heard before Carol's reading. In all that is sung, sung and done here through this worship service today, my hope is that you will experience the presence of God, even as we have technical problems. The presence of God in the words of that first hymn that we sung, Christ whose glory fills the skies, right through to a new recording of Go Now in Peace by the chancel choir that will be the concluding piece of music for this service. On this Trinity Sunday, though, it can be a very perplexing time as we've seen, trying to get the technology to work and in a complex time as well as we know as we live through this pandemic. But be reassured that the three in one are with us, God the creator, Jesus the son and the Holy Spirit. Now how would you describe the triune God to friends or those from other faith traditions or even members of your family? or maybe even people that have no belief in our triune God, the three in one. Now it's taken me some time to understand the triune God, not three gods, 
but one God in three persons, the best that we can understand it in our human condition. It is complex to say the least. I used to try and demonstrate it by using something like three in one jello, or some of you might have remembered that three in one oil mixture that we used to be able to purchase. I'm not sure if it's still available, but it really comes down to something that is more fundamental than that. And I want to start off with something that's from our baptism, where we experience the presence of God when water was either poured over our heads or perhaps you were baptized by full immersion. Either way, the words that ministers or pastors or priests use, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, were used. And that, those words you tell us the nature of God, the presence of God who embraces us by the entirety of who God really is. When I say that, I mean that God is represented as the Father or Creator, as we heard what Darlene read from Genesis. Just a few verses to remind us that God created the heavens and the earth, the light and the darkness, the water and the soil, and he breathed life, breathed life, into that soil and made humankind. And God keeps creating and watches over creation with love and care. And then God's presence is revealed to us in the redeeming, saving son, Jesus, who we believe in and follow. God came to us to experience humanity and to save us from iniquities, all the while asking us to follow to follow him in Jesus Christ. And God comes to us many times in our lives as well as the comforter, a sustainer of life and hope. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God in our understanding, in our troubled times, and when we're united and find reassurance or comfort by that presence. God's presence is with us from our beginnings to the end of time, and we are made whole by that presence in those three realities in our lives, Father or Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, the United Church of Canada Creed, the new creed, which was uh, published in 1968, we see the three working as one in our lives. You've probably experienced that presence, that presence of God in one form or another in your life. And so I'm going to ask John to display the new creed from the United Church, even though it's not so new anymore. It was written in, and published in 1968. So that perhaps not only the words that we're singing in the hymns or what we heard the chancel choir sing, but this will also resonate with you today, Trinity Sunday. John, if you would display that. And I'm going to ask you, even though you're muted, to say this along at home with me. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. I just want us to take a moment to pause to experience the presence of God with you while you're at home, while we're in this Zoom service, just taking a quiet moment to recognize that presence.
And as we prepare for the prayers that unite our hearts, for those that are near and far from us, the question I often ask myself, and, and I share that question with you as well, and perhaps we can discuss that during our coffee time, if you're going to stay for that. How do you experience the presence of God in your everyday living? As I say, we'll discuss that hopefully in our coffee time. Friends, let us now join our hearts together to pray for those that are near and far. Let us pray. O oh God, whose power is beyond compare, with glory beyond our understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is endless, look upon us in your compassion. For peace that calms our hearts and saves our souls, and for peace in the whole world and throughout, throughout creation. Let us pray to God. For our country, our leaders, and all those in public service. For this city, and for every city and nation, and for all who offer themselves with diligence and compassion as months of this pandemic stretch on. God have mercy. For our sisters and brothers, the indigenous people in Canada, for the families and loved ones of those remains of the 215 that were found in an unmarked grave at the site of a former residential school in Kamloops, British Columbia, may they find peace and comfort with your great spirit. God have mercy. For those that are nurturing relationships between cultures and communities, for those that strive for the healing of old hurts and for repentance and re reconciliation, for new and better ways to walk with one another in respect and care. God, we ask for your mercy. For the sick, the suffering, and the isolated, for victims of violence, refugees, and immigrants, and for our protection against all affliction, danger, and distress. God, we ask you to have mercy. To you, holy God, creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, belongs all glory, honor, and praise, now and forever. I'm going to ask all of you to join me with the words that Jesus taught us. Even though I say our creator, you're more than welcome to say our father. And John will display the Lord's prayer just as an aid for us as well. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, just because we're not in the church, but we are connected through this Zoom service. In this Trinity Sunday, we proclaim the presence of God and the outpouring of love with God's own being for God's nature is love. Normally, we would be now asking for the offering. And I just want to say thank you for your offerings, your gifts that you've offered through PAR, the envelope givings and the one-time donations as an outpouring of your love for God, for the ministries here at Maple Grove United, and to help us to put that love into action in God's world. So I'm going to invite you again to pray with me as we pray over those offerings that have been received through PAR in our envelope givings. Let us pray. God of overflowing love, 
receive our gifts that we've given through par our envelope givings maybe one-time donations even those volunteer hours that we put in as they are the signs of our love and commitment to live for you bless all of our gifts and our lives that they may accomplish more than we can ask or imagine as we follow jesus equipped by the spirit to serve you well and wisely amen let us sing our final hymn which is god of grace and god of glory and again if you want to sing out loud at home i encourage that you know even if you say you can't sing what's the harm of singing out at home right who's going to hear you okay diane bob can hear you but you know others that are, are on here as well so um you know sing out let's extend our voices as a sign of praise to god our maker Thanks, everybody. I think I could hear you here in the church office from your homes. That's wonderful. But now as we come to the end of our service, you know, the, this mystery of God's presence in the Trinity. I hope you are enlightened by that and you feel the presence of God today. So in the mystery of the Trinity, God's presence is always with us. And as we go from our time in this time of worship and praise, let us join in the dance of life and love with the Holy One, the Holy Three, now and forevermore. May God bless you and keep you. May God show you favor and be gracious to you. May God show you kindness and grant you peace. And now for a treat, a new recording of Go Now in Peace from the Chancel Choir with Dr. Deborah Henry conducting, Aaron on piano, Pat McKee on guitar, and Ron McKee on trumpet.
Oh, oh.